Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube. And I'm gonna be painting some roses today with my watercolors using a stamp set called Crimson Blush by Penny Black. And it has a full, fully open rose, a partially open rose, and a bud. And I'll be stamping a sentiment on it from the set by Pretty Pink Posh. And of course, all the supplies will be listed in the description down below if you're interested in any of those. I've stamped it onto some Arches cold press watercolor paper using an old ink pad that's not even made anymore. It was an old dye tan ink pad that hardly has any ink in it. And it's great for things like no line watercolor. So you can also use other inks, just you want really light color. So those lines kind of disappear. You'll still be able to see some of them in my finished painting, but not very much of them. And I've painted the whole thing with water. You can do that with a flat brush as well, but I couldn't find mine. So I just used my, my number 12. This is a number 12 round brush from the Silver Brush Company in their black velvet line. And I'm just kind of throwing some colors in here. I wanted my roses to be kind of pink and yellow, just a little bit of both. So tossing in some colors on this nice wet paper. It's not wet to the point of, of being soupy sopping wet. If it's that wet, then everything's going to totally mush. But as it dries, you can, you'll can you be able to see that some of the colors are going to stay more firmly where they are, whereas the first colors you put down are going to be the softest because they're in the wettest paper. I'm going to throw in a little bit of green into the leaves, but I'm keeping everything really soft for now. I want this to feel very loose and washy, but not so loose and washy that that they're unrecognizable. So I'm going to add a layer with all of the detail after this is dry. But for now, I need that loose and washy underpainting just so that there's something there to feel loose. I was really liking how that yellow bled outside of my rose. So I thought, let me add a little bit more yellow here and there, drop in a tiny bit more pink. And by the way, this is permanent yellow deep and quinacridone pink along with a little bit of sap green for the leaves. And I'm trying to create just a few areas with a little bit more color in them, knowing I'm going to add a lot more stuff later. But don't add too much at this point because you want this to be light enough you can still see the lines. And then let it dry. And this is pretty dry, not completely dry, but it's dry enough that I'll be able to work with it. And I'm switching from my number 12 to my number 8 brush now because I want smaller details. And I'm going to take my Quinn Pink and make a puddle of paints that's going to be a little bit thicker than what I used before because I'm going to use less water. I'm going to use water in a more controlled way, shall I say. And what I'm doing is going to the center portion of the rose. That's going to be the darkest place because it goes deepest into the rose and making kind of these concentric squiggles around it and following along with the stamp. But then I'm going to take a clean brush and put just a little bit of water around a few spots. Because if you leave all of that super hard line, it's going to look, I don't know, it's not going to look petalish, I guess. So I'm softening up some of the areas. You'll have to practice in doing this because it's really easy to overdo it. But then start building out from around there and pick a petal. And you can either do the inside of the petal, or you can do the outside of the petal. It doesn't really matter. When you put the pigment along that petal, it's going to cover that line. And that's kind of the idea of it. And just let some of the areas disappear into the paint and let some of them be really soft. Because if you start trying to make, you know, paint every petal specifically, it's going to look like you were painting in a stamped image. You want this to look really soft and really natural. And putting just a little bit of water around those outside edges is going to help to create that, that concentric circle kind of a look. Now, if you've taken my watercolor flowers class, in that one I teach you how to do some flowers without doing any stamping. You're just going to take blank paper and make flowers. They're much simpler than this, but it's the same idea. So those of you who have taken the class, you can expand on that idea by doing this. If you have not taken the class and you want to learn just how to do some simpler, looser flowers, there'll be a link at the end of the video as well as in the description down below if you're interested in watercolor flowers. So I'm also adding some yellow in here. 
here and there as I go because I wanted the flower to feel like that that yellowish pinkish mix of of colors and notice how as I'm getting out to those outside edges I'm letting the petals get larger as well as washier and most of that hard edge stuff is kind of contained to the center and then there's a few spots of harder here and there on the outside edge and then I'm going to do a little negative painting just a tiny bit not very much pick a few spots to create some negative painting and negative painting is painting the area that's not the image so I'm painting the area behind the flower and then letting that blend out to white and I'm doing that right in between where there's a leaf and a little bit of the petal of the flower I'll do the same thing kind of over on this side just let it be really soft but then it allows that petal to look like it's in front of something by painting that that background but I'm not going to do it all the way around if you do it all the way around the whole image it's going to look like you just outlined the image and that's not what you want either if you're trying to make it look very natural and soft so I'm going to do the same idea here with the more closed bud it's just going to have a smaller center to it because that's that's the way it is and the the shape of it is determined by what the stamp has in it so it's almost more of an oval than it is a circle where the open one was more of a circle and then it's got some petals sticking out different directions and I've lost track now of what's in the on the bottom of that <laughs> I had to go look at the stamp package to see that there's actually some little little green leaves hanging down from the bottom because my my paint got in the way and I can't see that so keep the stamp packaging on hand in case you lose track of something however the way it looks right now I wouldn't really be too concerned if I couldn't figure that part out just let it be washy and that's totally fine because it still looks really pretty that bottom rose I just I'm letting a little bit of color flow in there I'm going to add some green leaves to it but I'm not going to add anything else that to that little bud because it was just so pretty the way the colors just mixed there with the leaves you don't want to paint them in solid either just like you did with the flower just let them be a little bit loose and I'm using a little bit of sap green I think but there's also some green appetite that I'm, I'm doing a little bit of that the green appetite is a little little darker a little more natural and it has a little more texture to it the sap green will be brighter and I'll add a little more sap green later on as well be careful when you do stems uh, because if you do all of your stems you know really dark and heavy and you have all this really soft watercoloring elsewhere they're gonna stick out like a sore thumb so I have only one of them that's really gonna be sharp and it's that one on the right hand side the rest of it I'm gonna try to keep it keep the pigment light by keeping lots of water in there and and that sort of thing because I don't want those to be the focal point I want your eye to go to the center of that flower that big rose and not to worry too much about all the rest of it because the leaves are they're the least important part they set the tone for the whole thing because if you see a rose bush you expect to see leaves but they're generally not the the focal point of it so make sure you keep the attention of the viewer on the thing that's most important which is the flowers so now for the the little bud it's gonna have just a few of these leaves kind of pointing out and I'm trying to make sure that I I take care of those lines that I can still see because I don't want them to to show up too much and just let them be loose and washy though that bud <laughs> just came out so pretty really love it and now I'm gonna go back and add in those leaves that are hanging down from that rose that that half open bud at the top just to create those but what I was noticing here was that my greens they kind of felt a little bit on the dull side I wanted something a little bit brighter so I'm gonna take some sap green instead and just add a wash of some sap green over a few spots on some of my leaves so that they have a brighter area and a darker area and I'm not doing that by where the lights at or anything I'm not worried about my light source I just wanted a little bit more happy color in there now the last touch for these is going to be to darken the centers and how do you how do you get a dark red I mixed it with some green and then I mixed in a little bit of purple 
in, into that pink just to create a really dark color. And I'm tapping it in because that paint is still damp in there. Tapping it in only in the very center. Don't get carried away. You just want it in a few spots and look how much that makes those, those little places go deeper into the center of the flower. And it draws the attention as well as everything else. So I trimmed it down and I put it on a layer of yellow paper and put that on a, a pink card base and stamped my sentiment. I kind of feel like I ruined it with the sentiment. I wish I had thought a little more clearly what I was doing, but there you go. I still love the roses. I still think they came out gorgeous. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, click that like button. Make sure you're subscribed so you don't miss any future ones. The links to the classes as well as the supplies are all in the doobly-doo down below. And I guess that's about it for today. I hope you have a really wonderful day. Go make something beautiful, and I'll see you next time.